Welcome back to another Ventures video. If you guys didn't see the last one, I showed my first mission in Ventures and kind of how I start things. There's a lot more to know than you might think based on like the power level mission we queue, what loadout I ran, and it's basically a farming video with a lot of little tips in there. So if you're interested in checking it out, there you go. I do record these on Twitch. Thank you for following Philip. Uh, Twitch link down below if you guys want to be a part of these shenanigans. But today I wanted to talk about Teddy Builds. Yes, this is a very underrated, not underrated and underrepresented loadout on my channel and there is a key reason for that i sleep in the end game as you know my whole fun 160 series is all fun 160s and a uh, teddy does not belong in a power level 164 player mission it just does not i have had so many people <laughs> So many people defend Cyberclops with varying levels of uh, politeness and not. And I, I, I don't see it. I've been there. I've done that. It's not that strong. However, when I am power level <clears throat> five <laughs> and my party is still pretty low, even in a power level 15 four player, a Teddy can be pretty good. So... I don't know exactly about a four player mission. This might be a little too much too soon, but here's the build we're working with. So metal team leader is only typically usable in lower level missions. So we are not seeing tons of elemental zombies, although we are seeing some. So it's not that amazing even in the very early game, but uh, metal team leader is not that important initially. So let me just mention why that's not that important. She has a couple of other counterparts because I know that not everybody has metal team leader. So the not important part is the fact that you can use Enforcer Grizzly do extend it by 12 seconds and jingle jess jingle jess is available next season uh, enforcer grizzly i think is out on an expedition so i'm gonna have to go all the way down to here there we go 12 seconds and 12 seconds they are both out in expeditions because metal team leader has slightly slightly higher uh ability based damage it's not that much but that hero ability damage is a teeny bit higher that's why i supercharge her and she gets the pink teddy so there you go happy holidays is fantastic because we need to get that teddy up as much as possible Fragment generation allows us to use fragments that reduces the cooldown and makes it cost zero energy, which is great. That's uh, 39 in support, which is a lot of kills, but it's it's okay. Then we've also got, uh, typically, I might sometimes recommend Impossibility Matrix, but with this build, so long as you are getting fragments, he's actually redundant. So you do actually have enough uh, enough of a cooldown for an infinite teddy without impossibility matrix but he is useful in like a, a cyberclops build cyberclops is not present in this build because uh we don't have any energy damage coming from our teddy so we're not gonna be using him what we are using instead is uh jelly teacup so she obviously has happy holidays so she's great if you don't have this loadout then vouchering her is not recommended because she's available next season but if you don't want to wait two and a half months i don't blame you she gives you a 100 crit chance against every new energy every new enemy which means every single enemy you're just starting off with 100% extra damage or at least 100% crit chance which is uh really nice you're just critting every first target. Then we've got Gumshoe, who's available from the Art Deco Llamas. You can also research her without a voucher, which is really nice. She gives you a 30% bonus to fragment abilities. Note that apparently does not mean you need a fragment. So this is a flat constant 30% buff to your shock tower and Teddy. Metal Team Leader does not have a shock tower, but when you're running Cyberclops, that is nice. Then we've got Berserker, because it's awesome. 30% is just nice. This is applying to the base damage of your Teddy, by the way. So this is not like 30% and then another 30%, but it's still a nice ability to have and uh, definitely something worth using. And then finally, we've got Ventura Ramirez. So Ventura Ramirez is typically recommended just for some extra damage. Like I said, Impossibility Matrix is a bit redundant. Um, and she also increases your damage at range. And this modifier is interesting because it actually is the short range modifier. So getting into that right here, um, it means that basically you, a teammate or a defender needs to be very close to an enemy or else you'll do less and less damage the further away one of those... Um, items is i don't know human human teammate or like you teammate or defender those are the three that you need to think of as long as one of those is within two tiles of an enemy you'll be doing max damage and then that damage drops off over time i'm not certain the exact figures i did talk about that in my ventures loadouts video down below i'll link it down there if you guys want me to get super nerdy into it but my point is ventura ramirez increasing your damage at range could help mitigate that um that debuff so yeah, there's the build. Not to mention, it's also an Outlander, so I'll be able to punch and get some loot because I'm still not at a full inventory. Of course not. So, yeah, let's hop into the mission and uh, see how it performs. All right, so nice little hot tip for when you get in game. Fragments. Yes, you do generate a fragment every 39 eliminations, but I suspect 39 eliminations isn't something that's always going to happen. So... Picking up fragments as you go along is a great way to get a head start on that, but let's just throw them down, kind of waste our teddy on this little group of enemies just to see how it does. You can see 
it's not insanely strong, but obviously we're super underpowered. I am 11 levels under these guys and it's not even that big of a deal. Obviously I can use my Outlander Punch to get some easy loot while my Teddy just cleans up, doing a lot less damage at range, but I think Ventura is canceling it out a lot. So you can see that it actually does pretty good. So yeah, against the four player level mission or enemies, I guess it's not gonna be as strong, but so long as the enemies are physical, it's not even that big of a deal. And a little note on the uh, farming video I made, you don't actually need to use your pickaxe on these. You can just punch it. I completely forgot about that. And it makes these uh, a little bit easier. If you wanna save two seconds, then uh, that's an option. Also, also, also a little hot tip for you guys. Sometimes you can't punch these down here. Like, Oh, you can, but sometimes you can like build a thing like this and then punch higher. So if you're trying to get your maximum usage at a clip, you can uh, you can do that too. You know, it's funny. This is one of those uh, one of those venture season moments where I'm calling attention to everybody on the team to come do this metal anomaly. We got an AFK teammate. Well, snooze or lose, Vinny. Come on. You got to get everybody in range of these because you can just sort of maximize your output that way. Same thing with encampments. If you're ever running like a metal anomaly because metal is super rare this season, uh, get everybody all in one spot so that you get the most out of that because the uh, the treasure chest that you get is now duplicated for everybody in range. And that's just a free. How much is that? Not a lot, but 72 metal still more than I had. So nice little uh, nice little thing you can do. I do that in normal missions as well, by the way. So a little hot tip. You know, it turns out at this power level, there really aren't that many uh, encampments or anything. So I guess this is going to be the last look at our Teddy damage before we start the defense. Aura is telling me that the defense is uh, really easily with like one path up to the van. So I'm kind of excited to check that out. This is super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Look at that damage though. 50 compared to 97. That's that range really coming into play. So stay close to your targets. And uh, that's the big tip this season. All right, let's go to the defense. See what we got going on. Hey, Aura. Psst. Aura, we're ready. Mr. Nine Blue Glow. Actually, I have two Blue Glows. Just, yeah, I'll do it. I got it. I'll, I'll get the first one done. You know, stream delay is going to be a problem. Let's see if we can uh, get this mission started. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to edit them out. All right. Let's see what our Teddy's capable of here. This is a great, great showcase location. Look at that damage. It's actually pretty good. We are under leveled. Remember, this is a pretty low level party. So this mission is technically too high for us. And, uh, Obviously, I should remember to spam my own abilities and I don't have any coconuts by the way So I feel like the meat that you just get from out in the world uh, Typically crafting campfires is a thing, but I obviously don't have a ton of resources for that But I also get the uh, the health drops from that so you can see the teddy is already available to re be replaced That's why impossibility matrix is actually completely obsolete. You don't need him He only helps you with a fragment and if you have a fragment, it's um Kind of a dead perk, so something to, something to think about. And yeah, Teddy can just kind of hold the fort. As long as you stay near the enemies, it's super easy. Fairly an inconvenience. Have I done that twice already? A new pitch meeting went out, and I uh, really enjoyed it. So, a different change that actually happened with Teddy that I uh, failed to talk about so far is that they no longer instantly zap to the target that they're looking at. So, that can be kind of mitigated by making sure that the Teddy is always facing the enemies it's shooting at, but uh, that's definitely something to stay on top of. Um, Teddy at this range is not going to be doing a ton of damage, but if I stay close, where is it targeting? Oh, it's targeting as far away as possible. That's not ideal. Not ideal at all. Um, I need my fragment generation. But as long as you're facing the targets, it's not too bad. All right. Single target damage needs to come into play. If somebody's running a minigun, that would be ideal. Minigun is another loadout I really got to showcase for this season because every venture season, minigun is super strong. Oh, well, I can just, yeah, throw a drone. And then the Teddy can just absolutely wall these guys. Can I, here, is there any way that I can just block his line of sight? Yeah, because I want him to focus on the ram. That would definitely be ideal. And then just sort of give him a view. There we go. It's not going to be doing too much damage at this range, but you can see even with the reduced damage, it kind of doesn't matter. As long as we have a couple of teammates with Teddy and people aren't AFK in their missions, uh, you can do a pretty good job. I'm not sure which side I want to defend here. I might even drop the Teddy a little lower just so it's closer down to the action. Um, there are a couple of different things, by the way, I should mention. Or not, just a couple of different ways to spin this around. Where Metal Team Leader and Fragment Generation, you can put her uh, Fragment Flurry in the lead. I have her supercharged for that exact reason. Unfortunately, though, supercharging Fragment Flurry in the lead means that you're not just... Um, you, you get the same Teddy uptime, like it's still infinite, but you're just using Teddy more often. So in this case, Teddy's just up for a long time and switching positions is a little more difficult because I need to wait for my Teddy to be back. But as you can see, it's more than enough to handle this mission. There aren't that many elemental zombies and it's really not a big threat. Obviously, this is a stu stupid defense. Uh, Oro is right. This is ridiculous. But 
Um, it's a good showcase that Teddy can be pretty viable. I dog on Teddy a lot, and that's because this loadout I'm using right here simply does not work in the end game. This loadout does not hold up under pressure. It's not that strong for the highest level games, but the highest level games aren't really what you're dealing with adventures. In fact, those 140 zones are like the last, I don't know, 10% of your games, maybe less. So uh, using something like this for maybe the first 30, 40, 50, 60 power levels is um, going to be completely fine. And look at that, I even have a free fragment right here. So I'm just going to put, let's see, use that outland. Oh, it's only 6 HP. Um, hopefully the Teddy can, yeah, it's having trouble with these guys, but hopefully it can get some of my fragments back. You know, this is, an, this is the economy of fragments, all right? I need to get enough fragments to get my infinite teddy up time. And that can come from any kind of damage. So I could be putting down traps. I think it's a little wasted in a zone like this, but um, I need to get enough kills in any way, shape or form, to be able to get enough fragments to uh, get infinite teddy. And people were mentioning the, uh, by the way, the, the supply crate, where I haven't used the supply crate or my adrenaline rush at all. So supply crate is probably something I should switch to early on. I know Iwari runs that in every single mission. She was number one Avengers grinder and a friend of ours um, for a long time. So I might as well take after her. It's not really, again, until the end game where you're actually in dire enough situations often enough to justify uh, the, the heal. I prefer the ability to pick my team up in an instant, but these missions aren't really giving us that much trouble, and this early game is a great opportunity to take advantage of these weaker enemies and uh, utilize the ability to have an easier time and farm more. So, oh, look at that. That last couple of kills is what I needed for my fragment. <laughs> he doesn't know he's in the way. That's okay. What element do we have on this? Uh, Teddy, we need you. I'm just going to block off my Teddy so he's more useful. And then we can block the pathing of him. And all that Teddy damage is going a long way. Plus the minigun. Oh, easy. 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 It's nice having teammates that actually, you know, play the game. So if you are one of those people, you are welcome to join our Discord down below. Nice little uh, Seismic Smash. I've actually been praising Seismic Smash a little bit recently. It's better than I think a lot of people give it credit for. It's not that hard to build a loadout around either. In fact, you can use Vanguard Southie in the lead and get a three second downtime, which is really nice. And look at that 761 damage. It's not a lot right now, but it's like 130, 140K in the end game, depending on the loadout, of course. And it's, you know, stronger than you might think. Oh, we got the Ben's War Cry hyping us up. It's not gonna do much. This mini, this, this smasher is just gonna be frozen by uh, the power of Ice King. <laughs> it's so easy to take care of it. Just freezes in place and he's gone. It's not a high enough power level for them to be threatening the strength of the base. It's gonna be, not a big deal at all. One could argue that we don't even need to be using our abilities like this and um, because of the strength of that base. But that's kind of just the power of Teddy as well. You don't need to worry about getting good weapons. You can use this ability right away, even if this purple socket wrench is like the only decent thing I have. So it's, um, uh, it's a lot more viable to use ability loadouts all season. And that's probably what I'm going to be using all season. Last season, I was using the uh, Raven build. Look at this minigun! This lefty and righty! Ah! <laughs> no, don't go off the map! <laughs> what? <laughs> no, he's <laughs> Super strong. Super strong. I don't know if I just showed a clip of that or not, but uh, yeah, I'll link that short down below because it's super, super powerful, but that season's over and the cooldown isn't as good as it used to be. So yeah, Raven's going to go back into the... Uh, well, I was going to say, he's going to go back on the bench, but he's pretty good in dungeons too. So maybe I could do some dungeons videos. I feel like that'd be fun. Maybe if I get like a good speed run. I don't know. I feel like that might be interesting to you guys. Might as well. It's the same concept as what I'm doing here, where that kind of thing is happening on stream either way. So might as well turn it into a video. Let you guys tune into our, our shenanigans. Cutie Swift, thank you for following. Athletic Cash, thank you for following. I appreciate it. Uh, does Willow buff Swamp Knight Phantasm? I honestly don't know. Phantasms are really weird. I don't remember. They had some interesting quirk. Oh, I've got to be close to that fragment. I'm at zero right now. Come on. Does it matter? There's like 20 seconds left on the clock. I think my... I honestly think my Teddy's going to last for the end of the game anyway. How close am I to that fragment? Oh, okay, I wasn't that close. I figured if I get it from that uh, Seismic Smash, then maybe I was close, but... 39 kills is kind of a lot, and it's not even really speaking to the strength of the Teddy, whether or not I get those kills. It's really the power level of the mission. I mean, these are power level 17 zombies. They aren't coming in waves and waves. This is not that many enemies compared to the higher level zones. So yeah, just a little showcase of how useful Teddy can be. I know this is a below power level zone, but like I'm saying, I'm thinking power level 60s and beyond this loadout can work. And then you're going to have to switch to Cyberclops. And even then, 
he can carry you for a long way. Once you're using that shock tower as well, super useful. He gets shock tower, seismic smash, teddy, and it can really lock down certain positions. So yeah, you guys might get to see some uh, Cyroclops gameplay as I progress. However, this video is done. I'll see you guys later and uh, yeah, take it easy. And then...